and they're like extremely cash positive to the point where they're just like doing fucking random shit to spend money more or less at this point Mm-mm-mm-mm. I mean, ideally, I would like more land for sure. I wanted to move to a different area. Um, I wanted to move to a different area that had like, I looked at a lot that had like 20 acres of land, but my wife didn't want to move there because it was too far out. Buying, okay, well, I bought an oversized generator for my house, but that's not my the city. That's me. But like this, yeah, like, I don't know. They do like, basically, they have enough leftover money like every year where they just do like, random shit they make like random fucking shopping areas they improve all the streets and stuff and add like little like cafe areas and do like crazy expansions on parks and stuff and whatever you get the idea anyway they have like a huge surplus they basically like rebuilt like almost all of the schools from the ground up because they just have such a surplus of cash and there's, like, it depends where you live. Like, we actually have pretty high property taxes, though, in, like, Michigan. That's probably part of it. So, you, you know, you end up in an area that's more expensive, plus high property taxes, and that's it. You know, there you go. But yes, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Jack. All of the examples that you get, like those people give, generally speaking, where suburbs are not financially sustainable, they're literally always like really, 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 they're, they're not even really like suburbs. They're more like rural, generally speaking, and they're very, very, very low income areas with very low property taxes. And then they end up getting a bailout for a few million to like redo roads and stuff like that. So yes, some of those places are... But, I mean, there's also cities that are not sustainable either. I mean, look at the city of Detroit. I know there's a lot of things, but the city of Detroit literally went bankrupt. <laughs> right? Let's go on, Memphis. We need to locate a bomb. Whereas, like, all of the metro Detroit area, like, the suburbs around it are pretty, like, flush with cash all the time. Like, all the cities and stuff all over there. And most of them are out beyond that 20-year life cycle. <clears throat> it's not just tax revenue, it's multifaceted. I know what you're saying. Generally, there's like the life cycle of developer builds thing, then infrastructure needs to be replaced, water, sewer, streets. All that, yeah, all that's all that's updated. And still, there's still cash positive. Ten seconds before insertion. Five seconds to go. Cities. I like the city. If I was single, I would live in the city. 100%. Living in the city if you're single is great. You can get like a pretty, you know, a small apartment, one or one bedroom, whatever, maybe a two. Tons of walkable nightlife and stuff like that. So I'm Memphis. I 100% would like you know, be down to live in a city. But I'm assuming you don't have kids and stuff yet, Jacked. Maybe you do. I don't know. Some people still will. But most people, like, once they have kids and stuff like that, you'll want some room for your kids to, like, play and, you know, be in an area that's really safe and stuff like that compared to a city where there's, like, more crime and stuff like that. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
friendly, last operator standing. These are too busy for you. Agreed. But yeah, I mean, if you have something I'm missing, Jack, I'm always, always interested in learning more. Or you know, but every every most of the examples that I see, like I said, I kind of explained it a bunch of times, but it's always fairly fringe examples. What's on, Killer Man? Need to use your drone to locate a bomb. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Take the attachment skin off. You're mad as fuck. Yeah, I would, uh, at least as of now, for sure. Definitely want to be suburbs bomb. over, over, uh, city. But if I was single... I would pick city. Cities are really cool if you're single, right? Lots of people to meet and hang out with and stuff like that. Lots of things to do, but you know, when you're just uh, when you're just home all the time and you have Five stuff like that. It was like Hubes in the downtown area. It's basically a big parking lot surrounded by a servant stall. Dopian city planning. But I mean, if that's how people want to live, you know, there's a lot of different areas you could live. If you want, like, you know, that dense population, then you pick, you go, you go to New York. You don't live in Houston. I got the elbow shield. Yep. I got two ADS in this ball. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how, like, Detroit is, honestly. There's, like, a bunch of highways and stuff that go into Detroit, and there's a fuck ton of parking lots everywhere. That is honestly a lot of what it's like. But, uh, you know, you pick somewhere else to, you basically pick somewhere else to live if that's what you're in, you know, if you want something denser. You don't think people particularly want to live like that, though, rather a problem with how car-centric we are? Um, I mean, I, I, I get that, I guess. Um, I get that, but... One friendly operator remaining. Wonderful. Um, I, I mean, if you see how many people live in suburbs and stuff like that, too, there, there are a lot of people who want to live like that. If, if, if somebody was in Texas and they wanted a more walkable area, they would move to Austin. Austin is way more walkable. There's, like, the fucking Riverwalk, all that shit down there. There's just other places to move. Like, or San Antonio. I'm losing my mind. But yeah, anyway, that's, you know, you're trying to get, uh, you would move to a place like that, basically, right? I mean, at this point in my life, I'm just giving you my perspective, right? I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but at this point in my life, that's what I want. I just want to fucking be at my house. I want, like, space in the house and outside of it, you know? I don't want to be fucking right next to people or be in an apartment or anything like that. I just want a fucking house, you know? Space, all that shit. I don't have to deal with homeless people. Mm -mm -mm. I wanted to play Ash, really, so this guy got off Ash. Let's go. 
five seconds. Canada. You're speaking more macro. I mean, but the also this is the other thing too. You're basically like the ideas of this type of stuff too are also completely rebuilding the way a lot of these cities work, which like people always talk about like the environmental impacts and stuff like that. It's like, well, I mean, if you okay, that's like if you go back in time, maybe, but like the environmental impact of like rebuilding everything to create denser cities and stuff is crazy fucking terrible too. Like using the exist, it's like for example. Like, would it be great if every car was electric? Sure. But they're not, right? So, like, does it make sense to throw out every car we have right now? Right? To throw out every car we have right now to go electric? No. You should run the cars we have into the ground and start swapping cars to electric, right? Over time. But the thing is, with infrastructure and with, like, buildings and stuff like that, they last a lot longer time, so it's even harder. Doesn't mean you can change right now as a process. Sure, but it's also just like a lifestyle that people want to live too. Okay, looks right at the camera as he's coming out. And right at the other camera. Okay. All friendlies have been eliminated. It's also it's also just a way some people wanna like a lot of people wanna live too, right? Like I will guarantee like literally Probably like pretty much zero zero people in my area want to live in a city. Like zero. They don't want to live there. They want to live in a nice suburb. That's it. With good schools that are safe and they want to drive everywhere. They want to have space. LA to get changes in the city. See, the thing is, is with, like, at least in the U.S. too, it's really hard to get, like, anything done. Once again, going back to, like, trains or anything, like, the amount of... Like, back in the day, if they wanted to do something, they just, like, bought the land because, you know, or the, no one even owned the land, or the city already owned the land, or the state already owned the land, and there was nobody there. And they literally just fucking... Basically, like, just took the land or whatever, they already had it, and there was no environmental, there was no real planning. Just some company came in and was like, hey, we build fucking trains, and they're like, cool, I'll take a train. Like, that shit doesn't fly anymore, you know? Everything costs five fucking trillion times more than it used to cost because of, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot more regulation and stuff now. Like, it's a, you know, good and a bad thing, right? It's good because you're not people just fucking dying in accidents as often and stuff like that, but obviously it also creates problems of it's hard to progress forward too. For a lot of things. You can make a lot more progress when there's no hiccups, right? Anywhere in the process, but it's also like dangerous too, and people get killed and hurt and maimed and in the name of progress, right? And then that's how you get all these regulations and stuff like that to protect people. It's like the cost, time, and planning for this stuff is astronomical. Like, just absolute. Like, people don't even have a, a, like a. People who talk about this stuff have zero comprehension of like what is involved in like getting t shit like this done. It's fucking incredible the amount of money, time, and effort that it takes to do these things. And once again, you have to get a majority of public will on board and stuff too, and all that kind of stuff. Good night, sleep tight. Okay. Attic, Mav. Hello. Op four eliminated. Mission successful. Electric car, cobalt, and stuff. Yeah, cobalt extraction is not great, obviously. Cars are, like, a chunk of emissions, but, yeah, there's a lot of, like, companies and industrial processes that are, like, probably a lot... Well, I mean, it's a fact. They are way environmentally worse. Yeah. 
Mm. I don't know how to play. Thorn. I'm just gonna keep playing Thorn, dude. The Washington gave us 50 billion for three to four extensions. Do you remember any miles? It's uh, kind of a lot for something that practically just an alternative to buses. Right. The thing is also, too, is it's like... I understand roads and stuff cost a lot of money, too, but the roads are already there, and they're not going away, right? They're going to continue to maintain the existing infrastructure that's already there, roads and bridges and whatever else, right? So, it's like if you just add a bus system to that or something, that could work, right? It's easier to get people on board with buses, things like that. It's it's just a tough sell for most places, unless it's like really dense there. Even LA is like pretty spread out. There's definitely areas that should really work. It could really work well. I think, like, a train from, like, L.A. to, like, San Fran would be great. Like, if they made a fast-as-fuck train, you know, through there, that would be great. That'd be, like, super easy. Super easy to sell. Probably pretty successful, you know. Probably would be profitable as well. But... Trying to put... Public transport everywhere is tough. I think you could even probably do a cross country train, right? It'd be expensive, but I think people would ride it if it was fast enough. I'm stuck! Why am I stuck? Okay, we're good. Get fucked, get fucked, get fucked! Oh my god, I just whipped on this guy like fucking crazy. This pretty fires me. Unlucky. Wow. How blessed can one get? It wasn't started until around 2008. It was supposed to cost 12 billion. Now it's been 15 uh, years and it's cost over 100 billion. That's the thing with a lot of this stuff too. The cost, the cost, like goes fucking through the roof. Friendly's victorious. Hostiles the cost goes through the roof on a lot of this stuff. Cross-country trains. The thing is, though, is you have to under be able to undercut airlines, right? So, like, a flight to California right now from, like, New York is probably, I'm just going to guess, probably about, like, 600, 5, 600, give or take, for, like, a direct flight. If you could get a train that would get there, like, in, the, you know, similar time, like a three, 400-mile-per-hour train, kind of like a bullet train in Japan or those super quick trains in China, that would that would work. Eventually, I think you could get people to ride it. In the same time, tw China has built twenty-five thousand miles of rail. Well, yeah, China also builds rail at like a like a tenth of the price of the U.S. And it's literally a comp uh, a country, sorry, that could just take whatever land and assets that they need whenever they want to. It's like very fucking different. Like the regulations there and here are just not even remotely comparable, or even you know. Environmental regulations are very fucking different between the two countries. Those are, they're just not comparable places. Also, China is extremely fucking densely populated. Like, it's mostly cities, and those trains connect other cities, generally speaking. And it's ready.
I mean, if you're looking because you're interested, you're asking somebody for specific examples. You can just look. There's, um, I mean, it's a lot easier when you can just literally, like, take the land that you want to take. There's been a bunch of articles on it if you want to look more into it. But, yeah, I mean, they generally build their rail for about a tenth of the cost per mile that we do. Or kilometer, I guess, whatever. Like... It's not just that, like, it's just, it's cheaper, right? They have a lot more labor available in China. Like I said, there's just not as many regulations, delays. There's no unions, really, you know. They don't do any, they don't, they don't have to deal with anything environmental. They don't deal with any of the safety regulations, or not any, but a lot less of the safety regulations. It's also, that's one of the things that's easier when you have, like, an authoritarian government. You could just say, like, this just this is happening. Like, we're, we are deciding we want trains, and then they could just make it happen. They could seize land, change laws, change regulations, allocate resources, allocate workforce, whatever they want, you know? I mean, that's just, the bombs. you know, they're able to get stuff done a lot faster. Right. It's all state owned, right, too. Uh -oh. yeah. Interstate system? Sure. But it was. Most of that land was, like, not really being used in the 50s. Like, it's a very different, we're in a very different time where things are a lot more densely populated now. It's just, you're being really disingenuous with it. I mean, you're comparing the cost of rail construction in China to the United States. It's, it's really silly to even compare the two. And comparing regulations and stuff between the two. It, it's... I mean, come on. I understand that you, you know, are trying to make an argument, but you don't got to be disingenuous about it. It's really silly to compare the two cost-wise and, and the processes involved in building them. Head again. Oh. Ah! Shit. Ooh, No, what the fuck? One's an attic. Why don't be bottom white unless it's one of you? Yeah, bottom white. Four, last, last one was attic. Uh, 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 uh. Right. I mean, still, even in, even with the U, like, as, like I said, with the U, with the U.S. government too, a lot of the land was like either. You know, it was either already government land or it was like unincorporated or whatever. There's, it was a lot easier, like I said. I mean, you gotta look at the, and plus the cost of land was just cheaper in a lot of areas too, depending on like where it is. I can't resist speaking. 
and now I have a problem. But the cost of land was cheaper now, too, like, back then, too. Like, imagine, like, think about it. All the land in California and stuff like that was, like, pretty much, like, free compared to, you know, right? California is super expensive now, right? A lot of these other states, like Colorado, Arizona, bro, those were places that no one lived. Like, if you wanted to build a highway there or, like, have land there, you could, like, dude, land was, like, a dollar an acre. Like, it was, like, insanely cheap. Florida, all those places in the 50s, like, post-World War II were very cheap. Everybody was mostly concentrated along, like, in, like, the Northeast or, like, Midwest, generally speaking. Like, obviously, there were people in other places, but... The cost of that land has exploded over the years. Which adds to the cost. There's a lot more regulation. There's a lot more, you know, between safety, environmental, construction process. Um, you know, there's a lot of these things, too, if you're going to actually build them. With like, if you're going to actually use, like, U.S. companies to build them, right? U.S. steel. All that stuff is way more expensive than, you know, Chinese steel workers. Five seconds to insertion. It explodes the cost on everything. That's, like, not to say that it can't be done, period. It just, it, you know, limits a lot what you can do for sure. And it's, if you're practical about it, you know, you can probably get some stuff done, find some profitable routes, and find places where it makes sense. Not regulations and stuff, sure, but you have to account for all of those things. You know, whether you like it or not, we don't live in a, a place with an authoritarian government that could just essentially, you know, push you around. If you're a private citizen, you have rights and stuff like that here. And, you know, whether that's good or bad, you know, I'm not sure what you think about it, but I mean, overall, I think it's a good thing. Sure, people can abuse it in certain situations, but overall, it's a good thing. for the elo bitch was that 03 comeback Right, I'm not saying that, but also the thing is too is I'm not saying that California specifically has a lot of regulations. I'm just saying if you you're you gave China as the comparison. I think it's really silly to compare, like, you know, there's no way that you believe that <laughs> China and the United States have the same levels of regulation for rail between safety, environmental, and otherwise. Right? I mean, it's, it's really silly to compare those two things. They're not. Like, it's a fact. That's one of the, the things that adds cost and one of the reasons why it's 10 times the price, basically, to put a mile of rail in the U.S. as it is in china right also it's like they could just push everybody out of the way right and i could just say fuck you we don't care we're building rail it's an authoritarian government you don't have any rights you don't have any say fuck off and then they just build the rail right invite bro i told you i was getting off i was told you i was getting off memphis it's like fucking 4 15 in the morning i don't wake up early tomorrow uh seven and five today so you won that last game. That was good. Good way to end the night. We had a lot of good discussions today, though, I guess. I didn't say shit. I said I was like, I literally said I was getting off. Right.
And at the end of the day, chat, remember, this is all stuff we can't really, like, change too much. Let's let's wrap this up with since we've talked about, like, every controversial topic basically possible today, okay? At the end of the day, this is all just stuff we're just talking about for fun. None of it's really, like, too crazy. You know, I'm not perfect. No one in chat is perfect, right? We don't have all the answers and information for everything. We just do the best with what we have at the time with what we, you know, what we can, and, and that's it. And this is mostly stuff that, like, we can't change completely, so... Yeah, so that was good. Good discussion and stuff like that today. A lot of random stuff, and um, some of it controversial, some of it not, and all that. And I don't know. There's not really any wrong answers and stuff for the for the for the most part. You know, there's not any right or wrong answers for the most part. We're just having fun and talking and stuff like that. So, but hopefully everyone is just happy. That's the main thing. All right. So that's the end of the stream. I'm just going to go over the sponsors and stuff. If whoever wants to stick around, cool. If not, also cool. Um, but yeah, um, I stream every day this week, at least. And next week, I'll probably stream every day, too, because I'm going to be gone for a few days for the Invitational. So make sure you follow and turn on notifications. The follow button's right here. It'll put me in your followers list. Notification is next to it. It'll ring, give you a notification when I go live. You can click here to send me at any time on Twitch or give subs. If you scroll on the page, you'll see all these Twitch panels. If I'm not online and streaming, there should be an about button right here that you can click and see all these. And if you're on YouTube, check the description. Um, I have a charm and siege if you want to get it. Sub me on Twitch and link up your Ubisoft account and Twitch account. When you do that, you will get my in-game Rainbow Six Charm for free on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. All guns, all operators, all future guns, all future operators. You sub one time for one month, you keep the charm forever. So, yeah, you can sub with a 203 sub, a gifted sub, um, or you can sub for free with Amazon Prime. So if you need these links, once again, whether I'm online streaming or offline, you just type extra charm to get them. Um... You can click here or type in straight Prime. Log in your Amazon account. Click here to link up your Amazon account. Touch out for free, which gives you access to Prime Gaming. You can also link a family member friend's account with their permission. If you don't have Prime, you can sign up for Prime here or do a free 30-day trial at no cost to you. Zero dollars US cents. And you can sub to me for free every month, whether you have your own sub, Prime, you know, own sub, family member friends, or the free Prime sub. So if you do it, I appreciate it. I give the same money as you spend your hard-earned money. Um, you know, you'll still get the charm, sub badge, emotes, no ads, everything like a normal sub. You also get free games that you get to keep forever and free in-game content for a bunch of different games, including Siege, um, where I have... Where is it? Ah, there it is. There's a one-week booster for Siege that you can get for free. Just click here to claim it. My social media accounts are right here. My two YouTube channels are behind my giant head. Um, look up the National Interstate and Defense Highways Act. I know what it is, yeah. It was like a federal act, basically, that allowed the U.S. government to use eminent domain to claim, claim and buy land and stuff like that. I know. I know, but also it like regulated the heights for overpasses and stuff for like a train or sorry, not trains, fucking trucks carrying like missiles and a whole bunch of other shit, basically to militarize potential militarization of the highway system. But yeah, I understand, but I'm saying like, it's just, I don't, man, it can, Actually, believe it or not, you know, the rail system in the, is pretty extensive in the U.S. We have a fuck ton of rail. It's all just, like, low-speed rail, though, and a lot of it's freight rail or abandoned. <laughs> did I go to college? I did. I dropped out, though, when I started a business, but I am almost had finished, so pretty close. Um, Chief Fuel is up to 30% off with Code King George, so click here, and you can check it out. Um, they have a bunch of really good stuff. You can use my code and get the new Rainbow Six Black Ice flavor. My code also does stack on top of the tub sale that they're having. So you can get really, really cheap G Fuel there. Um, and yeah, if you haven't tried G Fuel, get the starter kit. It's a cup with seven flavors. You pour the packet on the cup, add water and ice, shake it up, and drink. 140 milligrams of caffeine, no sugar, reusable cups, less than a buck per serving, and absolutely delicious. So grab that Rainbow Six flavor. It's available for pre-order. They're actually shipping out my Black Ice Collector's box just shipped yesterday, so I'm probably everyone else's will pretty soon, too. Forster and Elgato, check them out. They got the best gear out there. Um, anything from all the peripherals for your PC to full pre-built PCs and parts for PCs. You can also type extra at mouse, keyboard, headset, or mouse pad, or lights, or cam, or pretty much anything I have if you want to see my stuff, my actual gear. But yeah, you can check out the gaming gear, so keyboards, headset, mouse, mouse pad, chairs, monitors, streaming gear, lights, camera, capture card, Mount screen screen behind me to cut the background. Mic to talk into. You get the idea. Pretty much every part to build a PC. Full pre-built PCs, laptops, and monitors. Um, they also have an origin PC if you want to build a custom PC or laptop. And you can check out the merch. Just a quick overview. These come in like multiple colors and sizes and stuff too. So check them out. 
Uh, and lastly, there's the socials and YouTube channels. Twitter accounts right there. I post on Twitter before I go live um, every day. Anything important goes on Twitter. So make sure you're following. I'll put my schedule up for next week there. Main YouTube channel is there. No schedule for that anymore. I just make videos as I see fit. I'm editing my own videos and stuff. Take it easy, Jack. Good discussion, though. Good discussion. Uh, second YouTube channel is there. Full game of Siege every day at 9 a.m. Eastern. At 8.30, there is a YouTube short. At 8 a.m., a Twitch VOD. Instagram and TikTok. Little clips every day there. Uh, Amazon.com slash shop slash King George to check out all of my gear. Um, anything that you buy, I make money from through that link, so I appreciate if you use it. And last and final thing, we have a public Discord server. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys very much again for hanging out in the stream. It was, it was a pretty fun stream today. We had a lot of good discussions and stuff. But yeah, make sure you follow, turn on notifications, grab the charm, grab your free booster, and check out the G Fuel uh, sale for the tubs and um, sales from Core Shell got on Origin. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate everyone hanging out, discussing some some fun some fun topics and stuff like that. I still can't believe Twitch is banning fuck ISIS or whatever, not banning, auto modding fuck ISIS. I'm assuming maybe because like, I don't know, dude. Maybe like someone said it's also a name, which I mean, I, yes, I've heard of the name ISIS like for a person. But I don't know. That's a that's a weird chant moment there, Twitch. I'm not gonna lie. That's a weird. That's that's a that's a little odd. But anyway, take it easy. We had some fun discussions. Remember, no one take it too seriously. It ain't that deep. Just be happy in life. Do the best to be a good person to your fellow man, and, and that's that's really it. Everyone just wants to be happy at the end of the day, right? So, all right, take it easy, everybody.